Today we're doing something a little different. I'm gonna answer some questions. What are your tips for beginners who want to learn how to bake? Great question, thanks for asking. For me, it was all about finding baking resources, and the good news is there are tons of them out there. I did take some in-person classes. Have you ever done a paint night? You know paint nights where you go with your friends and you get a cocktail and you learn how to like, paint a sailboat or something like that? They have basically those equivalents for cooking and for baking. I took one in New York at ICE, which is the Institute of Culinary Education, I think. It was like a stir fry night, pretty sure we had cocktails, and it was just like really fun, but educational. And I did similar courses, several courses in fact, at the Chopping Block in Chicago, which was so great. And then I also went to culinary school for four days at the French Pastry School in Chicago. And I had this amazing French chef who taught us, and he always talked about Zicoula, which is the fridge. And it was really fun, but you had to wear like a chef's coat and get special shoes and, you know, say yes chef and all this kind of thing. So it was sort of like, if you want to like lean into the nerdiness, which I always do, um, that was really fun. Another amazing baking resource is uh, a little show called The Great British Bake Off. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I love The Great British Bake Off. My family is British and I love baking and uh, tents and bunting and it's such a great show. Of course, I feel like a lot of people get into that show. It's so fun to watch, but there's actually a ton of really good information in that show that you're hearing from all of these different hobby bakers. I'm actually currently in the middle of a challenge where I'm baking every single recipe from my favorite cookbook, The Cook's Illustrated Baking Book, and I often feel like I'm in the middle of a technical challenge because like, I have some knowledge, but I've never made this recipe before, and as a personal flaw, I often haven't read the recipe before. So it's a very technical challenge-ish. If you were wondering, I'm definitely Team Mary Berry, uh, Mel and Sue. Those are my people. It's okay if you feel otherwise. It's just how I feel. Let me know in the comments if you are the same way. With baking and with cooking, I often feel it's really helpful to see an example of what you're supposed to do, how exactly you're supposed to mix these ingredients or what indicators are you looking for, what should it look like? And so for that reason, I also really like the tasty videos. They're sort of the hands and pans, you know, like over top and you're just seeing someone work really quickly. There's a, like sped up videos that you see on Instagram and stuff. But I think they're just really helpful because you can see like, okay, I'm making macarons, like what exactly should the egg whites look like? And a lot of times, in the book, it can be, personally for me, difficult to visualize what exactly they're looking for, what exactly stage you're looking for. But sometimes when you're watching it, you're watching someone put together a cheesecake and you're like, oh my God, I can do that. They also have these, I think they're called like baking 101 videos. They test things out and, and someone is kind of voicing over the process that they're doing and those are really great. I'll link all of this stuff below, by the way. Uh, another great resource, uh, YouTube. I don't know if you've heard of it. Next question, what are some of my favorite ingredients? Don't, do I have them? Do we, can we get props? Let's see. Here's one. I'm very serious about my salt, which I like, don't even know why, but I just really like it. In fact, if I go to you know, a relative's house or something and I'm gonna do some baking there, I like bring my own salt, bring my own bag of salt. This is, oh my God, I'm getting it everywhere. Oops. This is diamond crystal kosher salt. This is just the salt that I first learned how to like cook and bake with, and I always get a really good result. Salt is incredibly important in baking and cooking because salt is a flavor enhancer, so take your salt seriously. And for me, diamond crystal works every time. Speaking of salt, another great one is Maldon salt, sea salt. Maldon, I think, is that how you say it? Maldon? This is decorative sea salt. So this is an absolutely beautiful finisher if you're making, say, like a chocolate salted caramel tart or something similar. You sprinkle it on top and it's these really big chunks of salt that have this beautiful crystalline formation. It's gorgeous to look at and it's like perfect when you're eating something like that and you want to come across this like bite of salt. It's excellent. So highly recommend that one. Another one of my favorite ingredients, this might be a weird one, this is barley malt syrup. Barley malt syrup is I think Eastern European. It is what goes into bagels and I think also you can use it for like hard pretzels. We make a lot of bagels at my house, we love a bagel. And this not only goes into the dough for the bagel, but also into the poaching liquid. Okay, this one's a weird one. Uh, Philadelphia cream cheese, I'm sure you've uh, had that before. It's just really like reliable. Many recipes call for cream cheese, and like that's the only one that I buy. You know it's gonna be good, great ingredient. Good job, Philadelphia. All right, here's another one, almond extract. Before I got kind of really into baking, 
I, you know, always made like the birthday cakes in my family out of boxes and those kind of things, you know, random like chocolate chip cookies. And I never had anything to do with almond extract. And then when I started baking, started calling for almond extract in say like a yellow cake or something similar. And it just has like this incredible flavor. It's really subtle. Obviously you're using vanilla extract all the time, but almond extract, I often use this. I put it in cookies, frosting. I think it's a nice addition to vanilla extract. The last one I'll talk about are these eggs. Vital Farm eggs. I love Vital Farm eggs. I buy so many eggs. <laughs> we not only eat a lot of eggs, but of course when you're baking, you use a lot of eggs. These are free range, cage free hens, which is fantastic. The yolk is this like really, really amazing orange color. I just feel really good buying these eggs and um, they always, I always have a good result. Also one time I got like four double eggs in one carton of Vital Farm eggs. It was fantastic. I just felt like I had like the golden goose. It was amazing, golden hen. What was my worst baking fail? Well, you know, Oh, yeah, there are several, okay. <laughs> One time I was making bread and it was a three day bread. So that meant it took three days to make this bread. And I was sort of uh, two days into it, I think. So, you know, a substantial amount of work had gone on. I needed to knead the dough in the stand mixer with the dough hook. Put the dough in, kneading it, and it was on like a really high speed and I had it on my workbench. What I didn't know is that the motion of the mixing can actually move your stand mixer. So I walked away, cause it needed to run for like 15 minutes or something, or 10 minutes, like, you know, kind of a substantial amount of time. And I like to keep busy. So I don't know what I was doing. I was like upstairs doing something else. And um, I just had this like sixth sense where I was like, what's going on with that stand mixer? And so I shouted down to my live and taste tester and I was like, can you go look at the stand mixer? He was like walking over to it and upstairs, I heard this like tremendous crash and it had like waddled itself off the counter and fell on the floor and left a dent in the kitchen floor. Luckily the stand mixer wasn't hurt because stand mixers are really expensive. So like that was good. But obviously um, the dough that I had been working on for two days had like spilled on onto the floor. It had like dog hair on it and dirt. So that was pretty sad. You know, I've had things like stick since this occasion. I find bun tits challenging to properly coat, make sure nothing sticks. And uh, yeah, it didn't come out. But I think my biggest baking fail ever was that I was trying to make Yorkshire puddings. The way that you do it is that you have a Yorkshire pudding tin, but you can also use cupcake tins. And I didn't have a Yorkshire pudding tin. You put in a little oil in the bottom of each sort of cupcake divot, and you put it in the oven, you get incredibly hot. I mean, this oil is like smoking hot. And then you pour the batter in, and what happens is that the batter lifts up, the oil sort of drops down, and it creates this beautiful Yorkshire pudding. So I don't know exactly what happened, but I, maybe put too much oil in or too much batter in, or maybe I just had the wrong tin. But instead of it rising up and the oil dropping down, the oil just sort of spilled out and got onto the bottom of my oven and so did some of the batter and everything started to smoke and burn. Now, the Yorkshire puddings were still rising um, and I was really committed to them, but of course there was lots of smoke. So I opened the kitchen door to the outside, opened all the windows, turned all the fans on, um, my dog then evacuated to the backyard because she was scared, which is like completely fair. And the live and taste tester came in. He was like, you need to get the fire extinguisher. We need to get like a, the huge box fan that we have. And he's like, we need to, you need to turn off the oven cause you're going to start a fire. And now my dog is like still scarred, I think, because every time, like, even if there's like a little like controlled smoking happening with cooking, she freaks out. Oh my God. I don't even know if they're in my favorite cookbook. Like, are we going to have to do that again? I'm going to have to like send my dog away. Yikes. What are some good beginner recipes? Let's expand this. Let's do beginner recipes, moderate and hard recipes if you wanna challenge yourself. I would say if you are beginning baking, just get really good at cookies. Cookies are amazing, everyone loves cookies and like you can totally handle it. Go try the chewy sugar cookie recipe that we did. Great recipe from the Cook's Illustrated Baking Book. You don't need any special equipment and you get this incredible result that everyone's gonna be really impressed with. For moderates, I think that something like the ciabatta recipe is completely accessible to you. There are some kind of technical things that you need to see, and yeah, you might have to do it a couple of times to get comfortable with it, but you're gonna get a great result, and it's kind of like, you think that it's harder than it is. Also bagels, great one to try out. It's similarly kind of like a two-day process, you're getting more comfortable with baking. Like, who doesn't love bagels? Like, what a great skill to have. I also think looking for some recipes that have something a little bit more technical, like caramel in it, or maybe even something like an Italian meringue buttercream. These are things where you are melting sugar, you need to be really precise about the temperature of things. 
it's getting more into kind of like the sciencey side of baking, but it's a really good challenge. Something that's really hard, I mean, I guess puff, people say puff pastry is really hard. I love making puff pastry. It takes all day, and I think for some people who like aren't super nerds about baking, I guess that in and of itself is hard, but it is a bit more technical. And there are a couple of things that can go wrong with it. A lot of time in baking, you end up with a result that isn't what you wanted and you kind of have to diagnose it. You're like, okay, what was wrong with it? Was my kitchen too hot? Did I not mix the ingredients properly? Like, how did I end up with this result? And I think that's something like puff pastry has that. For me personally, I'm scared uh, of tempering chocolate. I just, I feel like that has just been like out there. The tempering chocolate is hard. Is it even that hard? I, I, like, I'm sure that is challenging, but for me, it's just like, oh my God, I don't even want to temper chocolate. I feel like we just need to like face, face our fears. I just need to like pick a day, temper chocolate and just like nail it. This is a tough one. I know tons of people do this in quarantine. I'm not saying making sourdough bread. Of course, that's, that's difficult. That's a great challenge, especially if you're in quarantine and you have tons of time. But for me, it's more about keeping sourdough starter alive. When you're making sourdough starter at home, you have to feed the starter every day. And so that means that you are adding flour and then you're taking away a portion so that you're left with kind of like a more concentrated starter left over. And so the part that you've taken away, it's not ready to make bread, but you can make something from it. And so for me, if I'm keeping sour sourdough starter, I just feel like every single day obligated to do something with the excess. That's why I would put this in the hard category, keeping sourdough starter alive. That's it for the questions for today. If you guys like this video and you wanna see others like it, give it a thumbs up so I know. Leave a question in the comments and I'll answer it in the next video. While you're here, you guys know what I want. I want you to subscribe. Do it.